Adrenal fatigue or adrenal insufficiency is a condition seen in people who have been in chronic stress and anxiety for a long time. In this video, I will discuss the techniques and tools that have helped me on the road to recovery from adrenal fatigue. If this is of interest to you, keep watching till the end where I will discuss seven specific tools that might help you on your road to recovery. I'm Monica Past. I'm a certified nutritionist with a master's in human nutrition. I am the founder of Nourish Functional Nutrition and I'm here to help you on your road to recovery. It used to be that adrenal fatigue and stress were part of my life and I was very well acquainted with them. They used to scare me, but they don't scare me anymore. Along the way, I have acquired a lot of tools that I have used and I am hoping to make those available to you. In the spirit of functional nutrition, where all things matter, all things are connected, and we're all unique, we need to understand that everything is going to affect you and work for you in a different way than it will work for me. So I'm giving you seven tools that you can try and I hope that they will help you. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is neuroplasticity. This is an amazing tool that I have discovered. It is the way that we think. Our belief system determines our reality. And whatever we believe, that is what our bodies will believe. Anything that we speak is what our bodies hear. Our cells literally hear what we're saying. When we go through life saying, oh, everything hurts, I'm in pain, I'm anxious, I am tired, all of these messages go into the brain and they they connect with neural pathways. The neural pathways in your brain have been shown to wire together in this pathway. In the beginning, it's going to be just a very slow flowing energy. And then day in and day out, as you talk to yourself and you tell yourself all of these negative things, all this negative chatter, then those grooves become deeper and deeper and they become like a well-traveled pathway where every time that you see something that reminds you of the pain, it will take you there or it reminds you of the panic attack then it will take you there. I'm here to tell you that your neurons in your brain are there to be retrained. You can do this by uplifting your mood. You can do this by saying something higher than what you feel. So if you feel tired or fatigued, maybe you can say something like, my energy is not the same, but I'm going to try and encourage yourself the way that you would encourage your sister or your friend or your loved one to become involved and to do activities with your family. If you're interested in neuroplasticity and how to retrain your brain, you can read a book by Dr. Norman Deutsch. The name of the book is The Brain That Changes Itself, and you can see that linked in the notes below. The second tool that has helped me tremendously is mindfulness. In studies, it has been shown that all of us go through life very distracted, especially now when we have so many tools, so many electronic tools, we tend to distract ourselves. If we are the anxious type, we tend to use these tools to keep us away from the present moment, when in reality, this is counterintuitive. Staying in the present moment and enjoying what we have right here and right now is what our bodies need. So become aware of your senses, become aware of your taste. What is your taste buds are saying. Can you put something in your mouth that will help you tune into those taste buds? Can you smell something? Can you touch something? Can you speak something? Can you hear something? Music, anything that will engage all five senses one at a time is going to help you stay grounded. So where are your feet? Where's your bottom? Where are your hands? Can you touch your lips? Can you taste the taste of your mouth? Can you think about the way your baby smells or the way your husband smells? Think mindfully. Think about the present moment and that will take you away from the past and it will take you away from the future. As you breathe, you will become more settled. And this is something that is always connected to the breath, slowing down your breath. And we'll talk some more about that. The third one is along the lines of mindfulness is prayer and meditation. Meditating is just being aware with your senses, is being aware of your breath. So whether it's the tip of your nose, whether it's your diaphragm, whether it's the air around you or the breeze around you, just taking a breath 
and letting it out. And as you let that breath out, make that longer than the breath that goes in. And the prayer comes in with your belief system, whatever your belief system is. For me, I read the Bible and I meditate on the Word of God because it reminds me the promises of God are greater than me, that there is someone that cares for me, that has made promises to me that are meaningful to me. And so whatever your belief system is, meditate on that, speak that out loud. Remind yourself of what you believe in. Remind yourself that you're not alone and that someone cares for you. Another tool that has helped me is heart math. Heart math is a scientifically proven method that helps you regulate your heart rhythm. If you have high blood pressure, for example, this is a must have for you. Heart math is helping you measure heart rate variability, which is the ability of the heart rate to come back to normal after an event. So if you get scared or if you're anxious, even if somebody says something that you don't like, your heart rate tends to go up and it becomes erratic. It becomes kind of like waves that are not even. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you have wavelengths that are even in your heart rate and that you're recovering pretty readily after an event or an upset. Set, and this is called coherence. So heart math teaches you how to be in coherence. What is cool about this is that it's a little device that it measures coherence in your heart. You clip it to your ear and you put it on your phone. It's an app. I will link it on the notes so that you can see how you can look into this. It really will make a difference. As I said before, this is scientifically proven. In back, there's many studies that have shown that heart math is effective in calming the nervous system and bringing you back to rest and digest versus fight or flight. Give it a try. Essential oils have been shown in studies to calm the nervous system and these have been pivotal for me. When I say that you should tune into your five senses, essential oils are a must. I like the mint family, that's just me, but again, you can try something different, but the oils that have been shown to calm the nervous system are lavender oil, lemon, peppermint, sage, rosemary, thyme, rose, bergamot, all of these you can actually combine with fractionated coconut oil into a little vial. When you buy essential oils, make sure that they're organic and they are of a good, reputable quality. They will help you. Yoga and laughter yoga have been pivotal for my recovery. I have been doing yoga for about eight years. It has shown me that my mind calms down when my body is in motion. It helps me stretch my body if I'm in pain. And this is something that is so important to understand is that just like I was talking about neuroplasticity, your brain will develop pain if you are psychologically in pain, if you're mentally in pain, if you're stressed out, if you're chronically stressed, your mind will try to distract you from the pain that you cannot do anything about, from the pain of the past or worrying about the future. That pain that you cannot touch, your body will distract you by giving you physical pain. So if you are in pain and you want to deal with it without medication and try to work through it, neuroplasticity is a great place, heart math, but yoga will help you stretch your muscles, your joints, and it will help you get in tune with your brain and it will calm your nervous system. These results have been actually seen in scientific studies. I have a video on laughter yoga that I will link here. It is amazing because it reminds you to breathe and it reminds you to be light. When you're nervous, when you're worried, when you're anxious, your nervous system is busy trying to keep you safe. When you laugh, you change the neurotransmitters in the brain and everything becomes lighter. Your body does not even know that you're fake laughing. When you start fake laughing, you end up laughing for real and that brings you a change in your chemicals. Just look it up and laugh with me because it has changed my life. The last technique and tool that I have that is counterintuitive because when we're nervous and we're worried and anxious, we tend to isolate. We tend to crawl into a shell and not want to get out and not want to see friends. But as with everything with anxiety and depression and chronic stress and adrenal fatigue, it is crucial to reach out to others to be in community. We heal in community. So please reach out to your friends, your family. Do not be embarrassed to be anxious or to be be worried. This is something that is just breaking a leg or having had surgery. 
you can speak about this and you can ask for help. If these tools have been of help to you, please let me know in the comments. Share them with friends and family. I'm Monica with Nourish Functional Nutrition and I would really appreciate it if you like this video to give it a thumbs up, to subscribe, and to be sure to turn on the bell so that you can get notified when I have a new video out. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.